Hello everybody, this is Baz Kerr and we're back again with another Path of Exile video. Today we're going to be taking a look at my Tornado Shot uh, Prophecy character. And I am currently sitting at level 89. But I did want to go ahead and give a small update on what I've been doing and how the build is doing overall. One thing you can see is that I've added Arctic Armor at this point in time. This is being made possible a couple different ways. Uh, as you know, mana has been a problem with this build. So I am running Arctic Armor, Armor Herald of Ice, Hatred, and I've thrown in an Enlightened Support Gym, for which I found on my own and I leveled my own. Um, yeah, I corrupted it, attempting to get you know some quality or uh, something of that nature. Didn't have any luck with it, but that's okay. Still a very valuable gem, and it's allowing us to run this. I'm also got 15% reduced hatred mana reservation, so that's a, giving us uh, some really good reduction on that hatred uh, reservation, and that is just a really really nice enchant. I believe I am running a different Death's Opus bow. I'm not sure if I was running an Opus or a Harp the last time, but in any case it is a different Opus if it was an Opus the last time. It's 5 linked, 5 linked it myself, and it is running Curse on Hit, Assassin's Mart, Frenzy, Greater Multiple Projectiles, and I've added Chain Support. I do believe I didn't have Chain Support in there the last time. However, uh, after 5 linking it, I was able to add that in. Uh, this does appear to be cursing with the chains. Um, if you don't think that it is, please let me know, um, but it appears to be working just fine to me. Um, but it is kind of difficult to tell if the chains are actually cursing or if it's just they're getting cursed from the normal projectiles. Uh, I have a calling strike that I'm leveling up, nothing you know special, it's not necessarily used in this build, just leveling it up. Um, if I was going to get a 6 link on this, I would maybe pop in Fork and just to get more coverage of the map and uh, apply more curses to more monsters, assuming that actually functions. On my chess piece, I am running a new chest piece. Uh, I found this Queen of the Forest myself, and I managed to 6 link it myself as well. And it's uh, really quite the nice chess piece. It's the first time I've ever seen one. Uh, I got really high evasion. Um, it's got really high life on it, you know, considering. Um, it's got three elemental resists on it, which they could be a little better. Um, cold resistance really nice, though. It's got a 25% reduced movement speed, which may sound really, really bad, but it has a 1% increased movement speed per 450 evasion rating, which what this means is, is that with the amount of evasion that I have, I am actually gaining back 1% more movement speed than I am losing. So I may be losing 25%, but I'm gaining back 26% movement speed. So uh, really quite nice. Um, that works out quite well and basically totally negates the movement speed loss. And it has um, minus 47 physical damage taken when hit by animals, which you know may not sound like a whole lot, um, may not sound that useful, but it's actually not too bad. Um, I've definitely noticed in maps with animals that um, this does make a difference. Um, but on the flip side of that, I do have a lot higher evasion now too, so um, it could just be that that I'm noticing as well. Uh, I have um, almost 12k evasion, which is 49% evasion. Um, however, we're getting another 20% evasion when we have a full stack of Frenzy Charges, which I currently can have 5, and I am running someplace right here. Evasion is 4% increased evasion rating per Frenzy Charge, so I'm getting 20% with the 5 that I have. Chance to dodge attacks, 46% chance to dodge spells. Some of this is coming from gear, some of this is coming from uh, uh, notables on the tree. No chaos resistance, which is something I would really like to change. Um, and I might. I was running a um, Chaos Flask, however, I've taken it out to put in a Rot Gut just to give this a try. Um, consumes all your Frenzy Charges, and for one second for every Frenzy Charge consumed, you gain Onslaught, which is increased uh, attack speed and movement speed, and cast speed. It doesn't really affect us, but in cast speed as well. Um, this is effective, I'm just not sure how effective, and reason being is that I have to consume all five of my frenzy charges and then I have to regain those frenzy charges for this to actually make much of a difference in my life. Um, 
and to do that that means I'm using frenzy for the first second or two that this is in use which means I only get about three seconds worth of the onslaught to actually help my tornado shot any at all good it's okay on a boss especially if I pop uh, Val haste and rot gut at the same time and manage to get back my five stacks of frenzy charges um, as I apply more frenzy charges in the future, this may be better to use. I don't know. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit longer to see if it's functional or not, but I kind of think that I'm going to do better with just about any other flask that I can find. Um, so we'll we'll take a look there. I do have a 40% movement speed, and I am got um, an 8% chance to uh, avoid being ignited, chilled, froze, or shock. And I'm capped on all of my resistances, however I'm not capped very high. I really need to get some more fire and lightning resistance uh, just so I can run those uh, Ellie Week maps a little bit better. Uh, I can still do them, but it's just not the easiest thing to do. At 0.6% uh, life leech here with a 40% modifier. And I'm gaining another 2% here, which so I do believe I'm sitting at 2.6% life leech if I'm reading this correctly. Quite honestly, I, I'm not real up on how this all gets added up together, but I believe it is 2.6. certainly seems that way. I do have a 100% chance for arrows to pierce, which hasn't really changed, and we're firing 5 projectiles with tornado shot. And we're leeching 1.8% mana, which is pretty much how we're keeping our mana up and going. We do get some on kill and on hit. Um, so we're doing pretty good on mana now at this point. We do knock back on critical now because I have picked up King of the Hill, which is really nice because as we crit chance or as we crit hit our uh, enemies, they get pushed back, and if they're bleeding, they're going to bleed even more, which is really really nice. Um, I have respect just a little bit. Uh, I was coming down in the Heart of Oak. However, in order to run the Heralds and keep my mana at a decent level, I have come down through these mana nodes instead. Plus, we're picking up some Strength and Intelligence, which is much needed, and we're getting 20% increased flash charges gained. And I've come up into Mana Flows as well. Um, I did this mostly for the Intelligence at the time. I might actually be able to drop this at this point. I haven't checked, um, but we will see. Other than that, um, I've picked up Life and Mana Leech. Um, I might have been coming down through here originally. Instead, I'm coming through here now. Um, let's see. We filled in this Will Healer. We've pretty much filled in just about everything we're going to need for this build. I mean, we obviously we have some more points coming to us, assuming I can level it all. Uh, we're s sitting at um, level 89 with... Um, about 40 percent, can't see it right there, 32 percent is what we're sitting at. Um, I have run the Uber Lab at this point and got my last two ascendancy points, um, which is I've put into Farshot. I actually put them into Powerful Precision to begin with, however this just did not really appear to be all that effective at all, so I've put them into Farshot, 30 percent more damage the further away they are. Um, I've considered specking out of Ricochet and this projectile damage node and coming up into Endless Munitions uh, to get the additional projectile. If I did that, I might drop greater multiple projectiles and put in LMP instead. Um, I haven't decided yet if that's worth it or not. It cost five respect points, I believe it was, to get out of these, so I'd to take ten here, put them in here, and if I don't like it, another ten respect points to put them back over here. Um, not terribly expensive, but still, you know, it could cost me 20 respect points in the end. Uh, beyond that, I believe I've got a different jewel here. 12% increased damage over time, 7% increased maximum life, 14% fire resistance. I purchased this jewel. I believe I picked it up for about 3 chaos, which I thought was a pretty darn good deal. And I am running... Uh, I believe this is a different jewel as well. Don't remember what I paid for it, but I did purchase it. Um, Elemental resistance and the life leech. I need something better, obviously. Um, at some point, I'd like to pick up these projectile nodes here and grab this socket, or come over here and pick up this socket. Um, but until I actually have a jewel that can be put in those sockets, it's not really worthwhile. I believe I was running Volpact already. Um, but if not, I am running it now. I've picked up all this evasion in life here. And I do believe that's it. I, I think I was um, specking through over here 
like this at one point in time. Um, I've obviously I've specced out of all of that and just coming up to Aspect of the Eagle. I could justify probably still coming up in through here and picking up Aspect of the Lynx, or I could pick up these damage nodes here and this would probably be the better bet. Um, otherwise, not a whole lot more in the way of points that I will be doing. Um, I would like to pick up at least one more Frenzy Charge, maybe this one and this one down here. Um, not sure. Oh, I did pick up this m Life of Mana Leech node too at some point. Uh, beyond that, filling out the tailing life nodes here, here, maybe this one. Um, and I thought there was one more, but maybe not. It may have just been this one that I was thinking of. And it's possible I may come up into um, cold-hearted calculation as well. I haven't decided, but it's probably worthwhile. And nullification might not be bad either. However, you know, I've only got a few points left. Um, you know, probably just one point, and maybe five more after that, assuming I can actually get to level 95. Beyond level 95, I just don't think that's going to happen for me. I'm not one to level up that high. 90 is probably the highest I've gone. Still running Val Haste, but I kind of think Val Grace is probably still the way to go, but I'm still giving Val Haste time of day and see how it goes. Um, I'm still self-casting Enduring Cry, um, which is allowing us to get the Endurance Charges for the Immortal Call when it gets picked up. Um, Cast one damage taken, immortal call. I'm still running desecrate just for a lack of something else to put in there. I might figure I might as well have something in there. During cry, summon ice golem, blind support, blink arrow. So both my ice golem and my blink arrow can blind. Mildly effective. Um, certainly uh, not the best thing in the world, but it works. Um, helmet, I don't believe has changed other than the enchant, which I've already showed. Still running the same drill neck. I wouldn't mind picking up a corrupted one that's got an additional arrow. I think that'd be really good for this build. Uh, my six link I don't think has changed any. Tornado shot, greater multiple projectiles, physical projectile attack damage, physical to lightning, pierce support, weapon elemental damage, which I'm still qualitying on this one. All the rest are 20% already. Um, boots, cherry steps. Um, the enchant's really good on this, but I am thinking about replacing it. Um, I believe there's one out there that'll give me some life and mana leech, and I think that would probably be better for this build over the attack speed, but I could be wrong. Um, and let's see, um, the gloves I don't believe are anything new either, however I do have um, an enchant on it that's different, attack with to create a spite, which is right here. Uh, releases a nova of projectiles around you, leaving chilled icy ground in their wake. So basically icy ground just like you get from Arctic Armor. Um, it does nearly 20,000 damage. Um, it's got uh, a ground effect that lasts 2 seconds. It's got 12 arrows that fire out from you. 50% chance for those to pierce. It chains. Um, supposedly. I haven't actually noticed where it looks like it's changing at all. Um, the projectiles might be chaining, but the chilled ground may not be, I think, is what's going on. Um, and this procs whenever you get hit, and it has a 5 second cooldown. Um, and the damage can't be reflected, so that's also nice. Uh, it works quite well. I need to look through the enchant to see if there's something else I might want there, um, but at the moment this is pretty nice. I actually quite like it. Uh, I should note that I did die a few times while trying to do the Uber Lab. I've died 95 times on this build, so is it hardcore viable? Probably, if you're a little more cautious than I. Um, you would certainly want to pick up some more life if you was doing this in hardcore, uh, make it a lot more defensive. Um, whether or not you could do CI on this build or not, I'm not sure. I've never done a CI build. Um, however, I did have um, one person suggesting that that would work with this build. Um, I'm not sure. It might work just fine. That might be a good at hardcore alternative. Uh, you know, really high ES would certainly help in that respect. Um, I don't think my gear has changed at all on rings or amulet. I believe they're all the same. I'll leave them here for a second so you can take a look. And that's pretty much it. I'm sitting at 20,000 DPS with just my ores up and my golem. However, um, this gets up to about 32,000 with frenzy charges, I believe. Might be 34,000 now. Um, with rot gut and full frenzy charges and val haste, I want to say we come close to something like 41,000. Um, it's really difficult to actually hit all that. 
So I'm not 100% on that. I'm going to go ahead and sell these things. Let's do... Ooh, not a torture chamber. Let's do an arid lake. I have been qualitying my maps up just... Um, not so much because it matches my normal... Um, you know, hey, it cost me 3 chaos or 4 chaos to do. Um, but because it's a... Um, I'm trying to build up my map pool. Um, so critical strike chance multiplier, two bosses, not so bad. Um, go ahead and regal it. Uh, monster damage got just another 15% quantity. So yeah, we'll do that. And I think I'll just run this. I did have some fun yesterday on this build and got my thousand rampage kills um, on a Sea Witch Canyon map. That was quite fun. I honestly didn't think I was going to do it. And it looks like we've procked a prophecy as well. And yes, I so that was a good example. You could see where the um, uh, chain projectiles from Frenzy were cursing over here. So yes, confirmed. It's wor it's working just fine. I thought it was, but I wasn't a hundred percent. Now normally I pick up and check just about everything when I'm looking through maps and there you go you can see the decree that popped it's quite nice um, oh we got a Zana may or may not actually do that on here um, for the sake of timing though I'll probably come back and get gear later this is a level 76 map so you know it's a little lower than could be that's nice we're getting a good return on our maps at the moment said I'll come back and get gear later unless I just see something awesome pop up. Should have been another map that I heard drop. I'm not sure where it's at. And with my frenzy charges up 31,000, I'm missing a there we go. 33,000 with uh, power charge. Not base. I have been picking up just about all the rings that I can find um, that have any kind of. Um, there we go, got both of our double bosses. Go ahead and pick up a couple of these things here. Uh, but really good bases I've been picking up um, on rings um, with perfect prefixes or near perfect um, so that I can alk them and craft them. That is one of my favorite things to do in this game which is why I'm always looks like I'm short on currency. I talk about earning currency all the time but um, I'm always short on currency and that is why I use my currency and I don't necessarily use it to buy anything. I, I use it to craft. I wish that GGG would do something more in the game that would encourage crafting um, as opposed to um, using your currency to purchase stuff. I mean, trading's all well and good. Um, it certainly accounts for a lot of the currency that I have, but you almost feel bad utilizing that currency um, to do, um, to purchase things or to, uh, you feel bad using that currency to craft things because chances are you could just go buy what you want for the price that it would cost to craft it yourself. Um, but I like to gamble on things like that, so I do uh, gamble quite a bit in here. As you can see, I don't really even need to use my frenzy most of the time. Um, it's nice to apply the curse, but for the most part, it's totally unnecessary. On this level of map. Um, I have done residence maps without any problem. Um, I have yet to be able to beat a Tyrion. And those, so I've died, I think I said 95 times. I may or may not have said that. Um, but uh, I said a lot of those were in the Uber lab, but... You know, really, that was only like three different attempts, I think, at the Uber Lab, um, where most of it came from was trying to beat a Tiri, um, which I can get to a Tiri just fine, get to her final phase, and then I pretty much get one shot every time. So, certainly need some more defense on this. Um, don't know if I've tried her since I've picked up um, my new chest armor. I 
something I need to go back and do. Still 50 more monsters left. Um, not much I'm going to do beyond this. I might do the Zana map. Um, there's that map we probably heard earlier. Um, so if you don't want to stick around for the, all of the mapping on here, that is perfectly fine, and I understand, and I thank you for watching as long as you have. Got any questions about the build, please let me know in the comments below. Nothing broken crown. Yeah, cast on death. Something everybody uses, right? In fact, other than the only thing I have ever found cast on death to be useful for was I once ran a cast on death portal. Um, since I only play on standard, that seems to work out just fine. Um, but uh, you know, obviously, it's nothing you would do in hardcore. But I kind of wonder if maybe at some point GGG might uh, do like some sort of a gem that allows you to uh, do cast on death and resurrect, something of that nature. Um, and then that would give you the ability to uh, resurrect and maybe it has like a you know 30 minute cooldown or something like that. Um, or cast on death, no experience loss, something of that nature. I think that would be a really cool effect that they could add to the game. So I think I am going to end this here. I'm not going to do the Zana map um, on s screen here because I wanted to keep this video pretty short. And that's about as short as I'm going to be able to make it. Uh, not really a whole lot here. That's not a terrible quiver other than the life and the resistance is there. Um, so it's pretty much vendor trash. Um, yeah, nothing much here. We did get a decent return on our maps. Um, got a resonance map. Uh, got an arid lake. Got a cells and a couple of fives and sixes and twos. Um, so overall, not too shabby. Let's chance this range to see what we get. We got nothing. Well, you know, that's actually, um, believe it or not, that's a sellable ring. I can probably sell that for about a chaos. Um, I, just a little tidbit there. I, I try to sell just about everything and uh, high physical damage, some dexterity on it, even without regaling that, I, I should be able to sell it for a chaos. Um, so it's worthwhile to give it a try. And, you know, a regal could make or break this particular piece, though. So, anyways, um, I'm going to leave it there. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll catch you next time.